When heading up on the train to Vexies, I was aware of what was in store for me. I braced myself for extreme physical and mental suffering and was almost excited about the challenge. For once, I could throw aside everything else in my life and focus on helping somebody else, pushing myself to the limit in the process. Let's wind back to earlier that day. I was woken up by her, crying and distraught after the psychiatric hospital had rejected her. Now, out of options, she had turned to me for help. She bought me the next available train ticket and I rushed to reach her in time. This was after a particularly heavy Friday night and I was hungover like you wouldn't believe. She advised me that, as her OCD doesn't allow food or drink to be consumed on public transport, I would have to drink what I could before I left. As you can probably imagine, the seven hour journey wasn't pleasant for me. Eventually, I arrived and met her at the station. She was wearing next to nothing, visibly unclean and even more underweight than normal. We got a taxi back to hers and settled in for the night. By now I was pretty damn thirsty but there was no food or water in the house and her OCD forbade either of us from touching the taps. As it was late on a Saturday we had to wait until the corner shop opened the next morning to get food and drink. I won't do a day to day coverage of what happened but needless to say there were some tough times. But what was worse than going without food, drinks or showers was the fact that it was so needless. Whenever we were able to go out to the shops I'd stock up because it could be days until we could go outside again due to bizarre, unforeseen reasons like a football match being played nearby between contaminated teams. Even stocking up causes problems though, as Vexy plans her whole week around the rubbish collection day and has to throw out anything unused the night before. Weighing up different scenarios turns the basic process of food shopping into a nightmarish balancing act. Does she buy exactly seven days worth of food so as to create as little waste as possible, but then run the risk of going hungry if some of it becomes contaminated? Or does she buy more and risk having to throw excess away at the end of the week? There were times when I had to observe Vexy carrying out rituals, like guiding everything in a room into the bin, one item at a time. Each and every item was a painstaking process where she'd make strange jerks and movements with her arms, followed by several minutes of standing completely still. She'd repeatedly ask me if either she or the item in question had touched the shower head or the walls. Of course they hadn't. She was on the opposite side of the room. She tells me she hallucinates that things move out of her hands and that she loses all depth perception, which is why it helped for me to watch her as she ritualised, which took many hours, during which time I had to stand still somewhere until the balls of my feet ached. I can only imagine what it's like for her. I felt like a child. You know when you request something completely reasonable, like, can I go to a friend's house? Or, can I play outside? Only for your parents to say, no, without explaining why? That's what caring for Vexy feels like. I was terrified to do anything without asking for permission, right down to, can I sit here? Or, can I use your toilet? And those few times you forget happen to be the ones that end up contaminating things, perhaps by breaking OCD rules that you didn't know existed. Any onlooker would assume that Vexy has made me her bitch. 100%. If it wasn't for the fact that I had a good idea of what I was in for, I wouldn't have managed to cope. It's not just about starving or getting dirty, it's about losing your identity and freedom. And remember that I'm not a professional carer. I've not completed any sort of course that prepares me for this and I don't go home at the end of the day with a paycheck. I also have a life to lead and all of a sudden I'm trapped in an existence where my own life suffers as a result. It's just as why I don't have a proper 9 to 5 job otherwise I wouldn't be able to help or I would have lost my job by now. Putting up with this sort of care is a bit like rubbing your face against sandpaper when the doors open and you could easily leave. I could just have walked out and returned to my own life, leaving Vexy to her own fate. At some point it was tempting, but I didn't. I voluntarily tolerated this tortured existence. Why? Because there is hope. I have seen who Vexy can be when she is coping better and I think that this is worth fighting for. She is waiting for therapy. Every time she nears her treatment start date they inform her that it's been pushed back by a couple of months. This has gone on for years. I don't expect to be able to cure her, only to be able to keep her going until the NHS gets its act together. We both know that this sort of sustenance is not a long term solution. During the time I was up there, the goal was simple to rid the flat of anything contaminated so that she could regain a basic level of independence again. By the end we had a dozen bin bags, largely filled with perfectly good food and consumables or fully working items. A while ago it would have killed me to throw away something as small as a toothbrush. And here I was, throwing away unused goods to the tune of well over £100. Did I mention that Vexy can't recycle or donate to charity because this defeats the object of having something permanently destroyed in the rubbish? OCD is nasty. It's invisible and the way it makes you act goes against every principle you possess. Vexy describes it almost like a malicious voice whispering to her, forcing her to do absolutely anything to avoid contamination, at any expense to her own well-being and even the well-being of those she cares about. From not letting me answer the door to the postman on bin collection day, to buying new toothpaste for me to replace my existing one, only to throw it away again after one use to ensure that it's out of circulation. 
All of this, to me, a sane person, is completely illogical, unnecessary, and it gets you where it hurts. I have my limits though, and the strain of supporting someone so dysfunctional is one of the most difficult things I have encountered. I found that little is known about the huge responsibility carers face, and I began to feel just as misunderstood, overlooked, and alone in this struggle as Vexy herself. I called out for help. I just needed somebody to talk to, somebody to understand what I'm going through and recognise my efforts. This may sound selfish, as the impact of Vexy's OCD on her own life is infinitely more complex and much longer term. If that makes me a bad person then so be it. I messaged my parents, requesting moral support. I simply wanted them to listen to the things I had to say. That would have been enough. Instead, they told me that I was an idiot, that she was using me and that I was blind to it, that by giving in to her manipulation I was enabling her and that now I was going to lose everything. I hardly ever go to my parents for support, but the one time I needed it, the only things they said made it worse. It made me feel like a fool. They even had the nerve to brush me off by saying that, as well as caring for her, I should be calling the radio stations, newspapers and local MPs to get the news out there, a route that Vexy has already explored to no avail. They were backseat advising me from the comfort of their own computer screens. Like hell they were going to do anything to help. To me, that's like people in the UK having a go at the doctors in Africa dealing with Ebola, because they could be doing a better job. It made me incredibly angry. On top of that, the videos I had scheduled in advance were running out. I needed to get back on Thursday to be able to carry on without negatively impacting my career. But a contaminated football team happened to be playing on that day, so it had to be Friday. But that's been collection day, so it had to be Saturday. But football was on on that day as well. Sunday would have been fine had it not been for the fact that it was Easter Sunday, so the connecting train that usually runs once every hour wasn't running at all, and the one remaining service had many changes, meaning that I would have to get out at two contaminated stations. Bank Holiday Monday's prices were sky high for some reason. Suddenly, I saw myself with five days longer than planned to wait in frustration and desperation. Not just hungry and unshowered, but with my own livelihood being put at risk. Although Vexy was now at least much fitter medically, with the risk of starvation and dehydration dramatically reduced, her mood and distance from reality showed no sign of improvement. I felt I was being dragged down as well, with no reward, and needed to make a decision. If you've been following my channels, you'll know that I did stay, and offered Vivexi to come back with me to my new place for a short while afterwards, because we had planned for her to visit me in April anyway, long before last month's fiasco had happened. I tried to make some content on the dying laptop that I had brought with me. I pride myself on my videos being good quality, and yet here I was, trying to make three videos with a potato laptop from 2008. In perhaps the first bit of good fortune I had, it was April Fool's Day, and I made a video in deliberately poor quality, claiming that it was my new gaming setup. I then decided to benchmark my laptop on brand new games, recording its painful struggle to manage double digit frame rates. And finally, I made a video about OCD for this channel, and it was very well received. It was the positive reception of that video that gave me the strength to continue. I was bored out of my mind from being stuck inside a flat most of the time, but my journey back was booked for Tuesday. With so many odd limitations and ritualistic tasks to complete, it was a last minute battle as we rushed to get everything done in time. There was even an awesome Mission Impossible moment where the taxi was due any minute and I was there trying to fix her PC while sat on the floor, ensuring that items only moved in one direction, away from the drawer that was on the other side of the room. Mission complete, flat decontaminated, she and I headed off to the train station for a well deserved holiday at mine for a while, away from rituals, OCD and contamination. It was about time. We reached the train station in time, but then we both got contaminated by somebody we walked past which brought the problem back to my town. Vexy is still at mine and I've had to endure another week with similar but slightly lesser problems, only this time in my very own house. There's no escape and no amount of preparation can ready you for this sort of existence. Vexy admits she knows it will follow her wherever she goes and that rituals will only provide brief relief, but she doesn't possess the coping strategies to manage any other way. The things we've been doing to solve it seem pointless when it can come back so quickly and without warning. I feel it's punishing me. It reminds me of a movie called Room 1408, which is about an evil room that breaks people. Watch it if you want to know how I feel. But of course, it's Vexy who really needs the help. I've had a taste of her life now. I have witnessed the true emotional anguish that is constant in her life. I have dealt with the frightening outbursts and breakdowns it causes her to have. I have seen how her life can be destroyed and consumed with pointless activities. But I've grown to appreciate carers. Those silent people who push wheelchairs, who help those with learning disabilities, and who put their own life on hold to look after someone else they care about. It's sad and somewhat selfish that I've had to experience it firsthand to acknowledge it. It's a thankless, uphill struggle, and I have the utmost respect for anybody participating in the slog towards recovery. It makes you feel helpless to see someone you care about deteriorate, knowing that you are unable to fix them yourself. Caring for a person with mental illness has made me feel like a better human being. It's opened my eyes to what a shambles health services are following relentless NHS cuts. 
It has given me so much respect for charities and anyone else aiming to make mental health care a bigger priority. It is sad and frustrating that Vexi has had to keep my help well hidden from the mental health team, as they further reduce their involvement if they know someone else is bearing the brunt. Vexi believes that it shouldn't be left to friends to pick up the pieces after the professionals turn a blind eye. She says it is heartbreaking to watch her illness affect people she loves the most, and humiliating for them to see her in this state. It is so easy to see how relationships of a sufferer can break down, creating a vicious cycle of no support, but I'll continue to battle on with Vexi, because one day, I hope it will all be worth it. I hope that in the future at some time, she'll be the person I know she is underneath.